back to you, Cypher. Now, sport ne superstars. The Akramaks have five points now and the Yaksha stand at six. In this power pack game, our players use this time to get fully charged and pumped for the next game, which is Dota 2 by Valve Corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to You Cypher, Nair Sport, Nair Superstars. My name is Vivek, with me is CloudX and you're watching the Yakshas on the radio and facing off versus the Akramaks on the dial. Once again, it's time for Yakshas to take on Akramaks at You Cypher Season 1. Nair Sport, Nair Superstars and after this, a new meta game because you've got the patch in the deck now. Absolutely, and I'm really curious to see how it plays out in India. Um, Every country adapts to the meta in interesting ways. One thing is to show that a lot of the green heroes will be taken away. Uh, less focus will be given to them, I hope, because Viper has been reworked. Diffuser no longer has charges. Um, the but until fan. then, Necro Force and Viper are still going to be first phase bans. Yeah, and rightly so. Akramak's making the right Dyer's decision to take out two of the top two heroes in the meta right now. Yaksha is taking out the third. The Venomancer gets taken out along with the Night Stalker. Radiant's We're finally going to get to see some non-green Dota, but yeah. when, when it's lacking Radiant's a shade of green, pull out a shade of blue. Lich Earth's is going to come onto the battlefield, shaker. and immediate Earth Shaker's response coming out from Yaksha's. A quick update on the scores, Akramaks are actually sitting at 16 points while Yakshas are sitting at 23. So Akramaks winning this game could uh, pretty much bring them closer towards the, the higher rungs of the table. I know it's still really early Ten on in the tournament seconds. so the scores may not mean as much up until we start getting to the clutch Five games where it's remaining. do or die. But um, having that early lead is definitely going to be important. Akramux, what are they going to go with as the next set of picks? They've started with the Lich and you usually Dyer's want to pick up uh, some lockdowns pick. in your fourth position when you go for that Lich. I'd like an Earth Spirit here. Yeah, but I'm not really sure if Akramux has anybody on the side who plays the Earth Spirit. The last time around, Blue Frog played the Clockwork. I don't mind that as well. Ten um, seconds. They, they could pick up the Clockwork for Blue Frog. He was uh, pretty decent Five on the Clockwork last remaining. time around. It's also interesting to note that this time it's Kiko Radiant's doing the draft, not back. Dream. If I'm not mistaken, it was Dream doing the draft uh, the last time the Akramux played, and uh, that was was the Marksman. Where the Dyer, Ned, Seth, as some of you might know him, was playing the Pagna and uh, yeah, they just got completely steamrolled. Uh, Monkey King coming on as the second pick from Akramux. It's a lot of physical damage, I can't really fault this pick. It's pretty good versus the Juggernaut as well. The Jingo Mastery stacks giving you that bonus physical damage to go blow, to go blow for blow versus him. Yeah. You've also got that Lockdown which comes out from the Boundless Sec. It's a great way Five to hold him in there while remaining. you beat up on him as well. But uh, Yaksha's going with a Juggernaut. Now, time and again, we've discussed Here's this, right? Juggernaut's a situational carry. You don't pick him up at, at, at just without thinking about what your game plan is. And usually, the situation that he fits into is when you're looking to push. Mm -hmm. Earthshaker, not the ideal pushing off laner, not the ideal pushing four position either. So, it may be a little counterproductive. Yeah, I mean, one trend that I've Ten noticed seconds. in uh, the Yusuf League, which is worrying to some extent, is that people Five are picking up carries remaining. in the first phase. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Yakshas could have waited, they could have picked the fire position, they could have picked an off laner. If necessary, you can pick a green leader early on and not give away anything. But you're committing to the Juggernaut early on, and Akramaks have more than one way to deal with him. You could pick up something like the Axe or the Call is going to hold him in place if he pops the Blade Fury. Uh, the Dunk might go through as well. And yeah, there are multiple ways to deal with the Juggernaut, especially when he's picked this early on. Once again, like you mentioned, he is situational. And uh, let's see if the Yakshas can build a draft that could enable the Juggernaut a little bit more. They could pick the Pokemon for themselves and now. try and make a push out of it with the Juggernaut sustenance. Yeah, that, that could work. <coughs> I'm gonna go with the Doom ban on the side of Yakshas. Doom is something that's almost exclusive to the U Cypher League, I wanna say, in yeah. Indian Dota. We haven't seen Doom being picked or banned much on the on the primary circuit, but uh, at U Cypher it seems to be hot stuff. And I think that's mostly stemming from the fact that Doom works well versus those green Five heroes. Man. You remaining. walk up to one of them, smack your Doom on him, delete him from the fight and come back to deal with yeah. him a little later. Thanks man for Akramux. Uh, I mean, they should notice that the Yakshas have first pick after this ban phase. And indeed, if the Yakshas want to, uh, they could uh, pick up the last pick. remaining green hero, which is the Pagna. But instead, what? the Akramaks ban out the Arc Warden. 
Okay, maybe they've got some insight on Yakshas that we're not aware of. Absolutely, I mean, very targeted, very specific bands coming out from both sides. Like, I'm I'm not really sure if you want to ban out Legion uh, in your second phase. It's uh, there's nothing wrong with banning Legion, Five but it's, it's a band that could have been utilized elsewhere. Yeah, usually when you ban the Legion, it's because you want to get yourself a bat rider or because you think you're going to have an off lane that won't or a tri lane that won't be able to deal with him. I think the Monkey King goes just fine versus the Legion Commander. Yeah. The Lich, of course, not the most useful versus the LC in the early stages, but the armor does help out later on. But um, I think the Monkey King by himself would have been more than enough of a match for the Legion Commander, let alone you throw in the four position that's going to come in and tag the Anyway, Yakshas are going to go with the Jokiro. And yeah, this is now panning out into a very juggernaut friendly draft. Yeah. The pushing potential is there. Um, the sustenance is there from the Jog. And for those of you that are confused about what we're talking about, Juggernaut can use this, the Blade Fury, walk up onto the high ground, get a couple of auto attacks out, and walk pick. back out while the Blade Fury is still active. This, of course, augmented by the fact that Jakiro will be spitting liquid fire on the tower every now and then, which slows the tower's attack speed and, of course, adds to the damage over time that does proc on towers. <coughs> Next pick for Yakshas um, is probably going to let us know whether this Earthshaker is going to be playing the remaining. three position or the four position. Um, Offlane Earthshaker did have this spike in popularity, but in my opinion, I wouldn't like to see him go to the offlane because the Monkey King is going to be more than comfortable just dealing with an Earthshaker unless the Yakshas do decide to run some sort of, an, some sort of a dual lane uh, in the offlane actually. But for now, I'd like to see Akshas pick a offlaner that can hold his own. Ways to deal with the Monkey King in the mid-game phase primarily include ways to look at him up on the treetops, right? Yeah. Right now, they don't have any way to look up the, look up onto the trees, but they have a way to burn down trees with the macro fire. So that could be something they've got working for them. True. Um, what's your read on this Mirana pick? Are we looking at a mid Mirana? <laughs> I don't know, but I think we're looking at an offlane Earthshaker. And in my opinion, you mentioned how uh, the Earthshaker needs to be brought down from the trees. There is one hero who, if he does Ten choose to seconds. go to the lane with boots or a wind lace, can actually hold his own versus the Monkey King and even punish Five him if he's on the trees. And that's the Bat Rider, which has been ignored completely. I would like to see them run the Earthshaker as a four position and maybe pick up the Bat Rider. I, I don't think they can do that anymore because they. I mean, yeah, I would have liked to see them do that. Yeah. They pick up the Rubik. I'm not a fan of this Rubik. I'm not a fan of the Rubik either. It's just. It's, it's, a, it's really a thorn sticking out of their side right now. I, I don't know what the Rubik's value add is here, honestly. Um, What's there's, I, I, there's this really basic level combination between the telekinesis and the ice path, but that's only useful for the laning stage. In the mid-game stage, when you'd have liked to have a rotating support, a four position, maybe something tanky like an Earth Spirit that could go in, I, I just don't see what the Jakira and the Rubik are going to pull yeah. off together. Uh, again, even the Mirana by itself, maybe you run a mid Mirana, maybe Akramang feel confident that uh, they have somebody on the side who's really good uh, with the Milana. But if this is a four position Milana, Milana once again, I'm not. Nope, it's not a four position Thankfully. Milana. There's no beef ban in place here, and Akramux will pick up the Spirit Breaker, aka the Mad Space Car. They yep. got locked down. I like it. They've got uh, ganking potential with the Milana, Monkey, uh, Monkey King, and the Spirit Breaker. Lane. Ten seconds. Well, I guess he's going to be the one that gives him that early laning advantage. Yeah. Problem Five is, seconds remaining. Yakshas may not you have the most devastating pushing power, but they do have some pushing potential. And I'm a little worried for Akramux when Juggernaut and the Jokiro just come knocking on your towers and you don't really have ways to deal with them in the, fr in the face of it. In terms of wave clear. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah, you're right. There's absolutely no wave clear that does not involve them putting their bodies at risk in the mid-game. It's boundless strike and that boundless strike is only going to hurt if you have uh, Five seconds some remaining. items which do deal physical damage. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if, if Yakshas just decide to push early on, the Akramaks will be forced to fight and if they do end up losing the fight, they're going to end up losing objectives. The final ban from Yakshas was uh, the Timber Saw. That's going to indicate that Akramux are still looking for an offlaner of their own. Batrider for the Akramux? Do you think that's a possibility? How do you feel about that? Um, 
lots of initiation, but so, not too many tanky follow-up initiators. Yeah, I'm probably not a fan of the bat trader myself now that I look at it. But then again, Yakshas don't really have too many ways to deal with that bat. You know, all you've got is a really big telekinesis, but that requires him to be within a fairly short AoE of him. Yep, that's, that's about it. Uh, but yeah, it's Akramunk's looking for an off -laner. Let's just look at the options here. You got Batrider, you got Underlord. Um, oh, I like Underlord here actually for Akramunk. You can do an off lane hot. Mm, squishy. You can do off lane hacks. Five seconds remaining. You need some wave clear though, right? Which is why I'm thinking the Underlord is ideal. But they're gonna go with a Visage. Okay then, a okay. last pick Visage. We've seen this on the middle lane in the past from Akramux itself, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so is this an offlane Mirana? I'm... I would assume so. Okay, yes. so I would assume it's an offlane Mirana. The thing about offlane Mirana is um, that A, they picked when Five they're up against remaining. weaker tri lanes, and B, they're actually not run as pure offlaners. They often run with two supports sitting in the lane. Signify do this a lot with Blizzard. We've seen other teams do it as well. Um, if it is a tri lane assaults, Mirana. Lich and Spirit Breaker. That's mm. underwhelming. Man. That's underwhelming. A. B. Then what's the point of having a Lich if he's not like enabling another lane? The thing is, uh, Mirana may not be in that much in jeopardy in this game. Okay, hero. with the Sunstrike, that adds a whole new layer on top of it, right? Because a lift into an Ice Path and a Sunstrike could be the death of the Mirana right there. Of course, you're going to have the Juggernaut coming in who will get some Blade Tree damage off. But the collective stun time between a Rubik and a Jokiro is not enough for a Blade Fury to do all the damage. Long enough for the Mirana to leap out as well. Ideally with Phase Boots and maybe a Magic Stick of sorts, Mirana should be okay in that But lane. you know what's the problem about Mirana as an offlaner? I mean, as an offlaner, what are you bringing to the table? You're not bringing initiation. You're not bringing insane damage of any sorts. You're not frontlining. What, what is it that you're doing for your team? You're not going to put points into Moonlight Shadow. You're not going to farm like a beast as a Mirana. You, I mean, the farm could be debated because... You're well, going to throw arrows, but still, it's not enough. Like, it's not going to be... Like, like let's put it this way. At the 18-minute mark, who's going to have more impact? Kalnag on the Earthshaker with the Blink or Mirana with Faze and Akela? Yeah, I, I mean, when you put it that way, I'd probably say Kalnag has the upper hand. But the right. problem is, when, you look, when you're thinking that far ahead, it's a whole different ball game, right? Because at six, at, at level six, which is probably going to happen somewhere between the eight and ten minute mark, Mirana's going to have a Moonlight Shadow and Earthshaker's going to have nothing. Right. So that's kind of where the power balance lies in favor of the lineup running a Mirana. You, you come online a little earlier, but you know, if you don't capitalize on that uh, early game aggression or early game momentum that you can build up with a Moonlight Shadow, you're probably going to end up going to that 18 minute analogy with the Earthshaker Way versus Mirana. Anchor. This okay. game is on. Well, the standard, I'm, the great I'm Indian more, Dota pause is present here as well, man. I'm more in favor of the Yakshas in the lineup. I think uh, Invoker is going to do fine in the mid lane. If anything, the Akra monks are going to rely heavily on the Spirit Breaker to make the lanes work for them. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's up to the Spirit Breaker and the Lich. But one thing that I have noticed in the past, uh, especially at Ucypher, is that. I mean, offlaners are getting a lot more than they should. It seems as if uh, the supports and the core and the tri lane are not executing as well as they should. And offlaners get away with a lot. The question is, how much can a Mirana get away with, and how much can the Earthshaker get away with? Yeah, this is—it's going to be a test of who can punish well, hold the offlaner a little it's better. It's not an offlane. Is—is that an offlane Mirana? No, it's a safe lane Mirana actually. So they, there goes all of our analogy out the window, because they're sending. A monkey king to the offlane by the looks of it. Okay, we've seen this before. So I presume he'll be putting more points into Primal Spring. Yeah. Uh, how do you stop him, to be honest, in this game? Because all he's got to do is basically come and sit up here. He's going to get free EXP uncontested. And just move tree to tree to tree and come down when he needs the last hit. Mm -hmm. There's no way to break, break trees early on here. Yeah, I mean, in hindsight, if the Akshas picked a Batrider, and uh, let the Earthshaker be a forward and maybe ran some sort of an offensive try lane. It uh, wouldn't be such fun, uh, so, so much fun for Monkey King in the offlane. But yeah, to some extent, I personally feel that the Akramans have a greedy lineup of sorts. Sure, they can fight early to, with the Visage and maybe with Soul Assumption, but mid Visage likes to put, put points in a Grave Chill, primarily wants that attack speed. No. And, Usually you'd put like one point into the Grave Chill and then you'd max out the Solar Assumption and the 
brave keepers look. Okay. So Kiko is probably going to go in that direction. That makes him I, tanky and it makes him a, a walking, I've talking I've seen view. them do it the other way around. Grave chill, one point in solo assumption and max grave keepers. Why look. would you do that? that because makes... apparently you get attached to grave chill and your familiars hit harder. Uh, is it really worth prioritizing that over what's possibly the strongest yeah, and most spammable nuke in the game? It's one of the most ridiculous nukes, but this is exactly what co-visages have been doing. I, 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 this is what I've noticed in all the games. No, so I, I remember you telling us about this nonsense and I remember Gambit and I sitting down and having a chat about this and then we actually went through a pro-game replay and we're like, yeah, Vivek doesn't know what he's talking okay, about. Okay, look what he's... Okay, fine, let, let's take a look. I, I don't know, I'm curious to see how this In fact, happens. in this particular game, it would be silly to not, not put a point into Not max assumption. out the soul assumption. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, look, my source is more in no chance than does. I think he was he, I think he was baiting you, man. But that's very possible. Master beta. Jabeta. Make believe. He's got himself a uh, Wraith Fan to start with on this top lane. He's up against Khal Nayak. He's got a creep wave under his tower. I, I don't even know how that happens. Yeah. Did he? But walk up there and like drag it along with it? That's... That seems like what happened. Rubik though, he's gone in the bottom lane. This is where Dream's been hanging about by himself. He chose not to put a point in anything just yet. He's still okay. holding on to the skill point. I mean, he's uh, got a salve. He's forced out of Blade Fury. Possibly could approach the lane if he wants to. It's odd that he didn't take the Primal Spring to start with. But he's, I guess he's just trying to get some CS going instead. Yeah, there it is. Primal Spring. Oh, rather the tree dance to begin with. <coughs> What's the spell break after? He's charging mid. At level 1 with an Orb of Venom, followed up with a slow from the Grave Chill. Appa, I don't think he's gonna die, but they are gonna send him back a bit. And his fall spirit has been wasted as well. This is not working out well for the Invoker at all. Appa, while he may have 9 and 3 CS, he's now out of mana entirely and has to call out a Ring of Basilius for himself. This stays survivable and sustainable. Yeah, I mean, he's been using the fourth spin to the farm dead. there. Was a time where I remember a lot of invokers going for the Ring of Aquila, uh, primarily yes. because it does benefit your fourth spin to some extent and the mm -hmm. mana helps as well. Uh, and it, it looks like he might be going to sit here with Quite stuck to the lanes, Invoker leading the CS shards. That's another problem with the Visage. A lot of people like to pick this hero and run into the mid lane, but do not end up CSing very effectively. And this could come back to hurt them if you have an underfarmed Visage who you've given away the mid lane to. You know, this bottom lane, it seems like Dream is not picking the most of his advantage here. His default status should be on top of a tree. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he's just hanging down there. A freak sees him. He can't jump onto the tree when freaks hits. Freak hits him. Okay, he's got Jingu stacks, so that's why he's going to die. But yeah, ideally he wants to be. He just wants to be up on the trees and yeah. watching from the treetops, leeching exp. Has Juggernaut got a quelling blade? Yeah, he's got a quelling blade. Okay. But again, it's, it's pretty difficult to go and find the right tree when you don't know where, when you have no indication of where the monkey king might be. Accurate. Farming well for now, he's at 13 and 5. Monkey King does have 5 CS to his name, but this is when the tip, the scales start to tilt a little bit in favor of Monkey King, right? He's got a point in the boundless strike, and soon enough he's gonna have more points in Jingu. Oh, freak! He's been uh, cordoned off on the side here. Dream is getting a few more auto attacks off on him. Two stacks, three stacks, fourth coming online now, but the lift is there. They've got the Blade Fury along with Duel, but Freak though gets stacked with Jingu stacks, but it's just the level 1 Jingu. VP notices it and punishes it. Yeah, well, first blood. well done by VP. That was missing of the map. Came from behind and now uh, at the right place at the right time. Focused the core and brought him down. Beautiful stuff uh, coming up from Yakshas. They get first blood. And what's even uh, better for them, what's really the icing on the cake, is that Kalnaik is, has not died. He's farming. He's up against the Mirana. Once he picks up his four man shield, what could possibly be the last time in the U Cypher League, he's going to be fine. Kalnayak, he's uh, like you said, he is farming, but his progression is a little slow. He's, got, he's up to level four, which is fantastic for him. But yeah. Item progression not as nice as he would have liked it to be. But anyway, Blue Frog is going to be a bit of a nuisance here, forcing Appa to use the Fall Spirit and turn around for him a bit. And while Kiko is salving up at me. I mean, it's very easy to look at this. Uh, I mean, from, from a caster point, it's very easy to say this, but the Spirit Breaker hasn't had any impact just yet on games. He hasn't shut down the Invoker's farm, he's not managed to kill him, and uh, he's just hanging around with an Archangel. 
They're trying to use the Invoker as bait here for the Spirit Breaker to come out. At least they were, but now VP and Kalnayak are both going off in different directions. Which means that Blue Frog can actually go for a kill, but elsewhere it looks like Juggernaut was in a bit of a pickle here as Dean's giving chase. He already expended the Boundless Strike, so Actrid will not die. In fact, Spirit Breaker's heading towards the bottom lane with the Rubik came in with the lift as well. But again, nobody dies despite many heroes bearing their fangs at each other. Yeah, the charge cancelled as well. Spirit Breaker not committing just yet. Blue Frog, yet to have any impact across either lane just yet. This top lane though, while we did talk about how the Earthshaker was getting a bit, the Mirana is getting a lot here. She's uh, got the Ring of Vicula and the Treads looks to be coming online soon enough as well, which means that uh, her solo kill potential goes through the roof. Yeah. I mean, it seems as if Kalnak is just drawing the creep back row and trying to get as many last hits as he can. VP though, out of position on the Rubik, does manage to lift up a Familiar and toss it back. The Familiars have done a reasonable amount of damage, and here comes Blue Frog charging in. Solar Dumption on Kiko, 3 points in it. Has a couple of charges as well. Blue Frog runs back, VP fall. Kiko brings him down and... Don't stay near the Vistage, don't stay near the Vistage. The Nuke is going to hurt you so much more if you stick around for longer. He's got no more mana for the next Solar Dumption, Kiko. Just proving why this is, should be skilled this way. Taking down two and now trying to escape. I mean, he's he's to tank in, up the tower. But, okay. So, they got the Rubik, they got the Jakiro, they didn't lose the Spirit Breaker. Radiant and if I'm not mistaken, who got the kills? One for Kiko, one for Max. Okay. This works out brilliantly for uh, Kiko and his boys, in my opinion. Akramaksa, gonna be very happy with it with its skirmish went. And now with the shrines popped, Kiko's back in the lane ready to farm and fight again. The point of having a Visage in the lane is not to try and see it. It's to get your levels online so your soul assumption hurts hard. Right. And then with the Spirit Breaker ro rotating in, you follow up with the stuns from the familiars and the nuke is enough to finish the job on Abba. He needs to call out infused raindrops to himself to survive but instead he's choosing to finish up his power treads. What? Not a fan. So... Quick... Uh Boot upgrade 101. Why do you make power threads? Attack speed, stats, the ability to thread switch. I mean, None of these really benefit the invoker. If effective HP was the objective, it should have been the infused raindrops, which he now realizes he now that he requires. Up, yeah. And, I mean, as a, okay, bot lane. They found the monkey. They lifted him up in the air. There's a charge onto the Rubik, but Dream not working with any Jingu stacks. Could possibly turn this around, though. He's Jump. bailed. I don't think he can turn this around by himself. He's at level 5 and... Freak knows where he is. I, Freak saw him jump past him. He doesn't have a way to, sp to take him down though. Yeah. This is the biggest disadvantage of being up against a monkey king with no way to spot him up top. It's one of those rare games where I'd actually advocate a push for a, for a task. Or task? A task okay. pickup. Anyway, middle lane. They're gonna turn around with the gold snap, slowing Blue Frog in his tracks. Radiant Observer was providing intel of when he was charging in. Kiko might have to forfeit one, at least one of his familiars here. Ah, never mind, they're just gonna fly away because no one wants to contest them. Two and one, it's a fairly peaceful start at uh, the USI for, for the day. I, I, I mean, I, it's rare that we've seen a game with such passivity for the first yeah, few minutes. Yeah, but it's almost as if Blue Frog heard you. He's running like a madman or rather mad cow towards a bot lane. Moving forward with haste, I'm not really sure if he can just run right into them. Dream needs a couple of Jingu Mastery stacks for the skill to really happen. And the Lich, I'm, I don't think he's going to offer too much. They can't wait too long though, because the I, Jog I, is about to hit level look, 6. Look, if, if they really dive under the tier 1 tower, I'm pretty sure Kalnak on the Urshik has a TP and he's going to rotate with that Echo Slam and make this really Let's horrible. Let's also not forget that there's a Sun yeah, Strike that can go in the party. This is for all intents and purposes a 3v4 or a 3v5 in the bottom lane. This is actually a Mexican standoff until VP decides to go garden gaming. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think VP just wanted to get a ward drop. He's holding onto an observer. He's Another charge. Looks like uh, Blue Frog has actually just ditched this altogether and he's moving towards mid where Kiko has begun. They've got the Grave Keeper's Cloak. No, never mind. They actually have the Soul Assumption at the ready. Do they have detection? Looks like they don't. I mean, just yesterday we saw the undoing of a team because of the lack Radiant's of detection. Yeah. I wonder attack. if this is a sign of things to come. It is. Um, it really hurts when you're not getting detection. You're. 
and now Bukov trying to force the issue. Sure, he knocks it back, but Kalnak can just turn around. It's only one point in the Enchant Totem just yet, so the physical damage isn't that much. And Blue Frog, I mean, he's been visiting all lanes like a tourist and not getting too much done. Yeah, this isn't the best. This isn't the ideal game for Blue Frog. He's just been running around stealing EXP. He actually didn't check the clock, so he could have got yeah. two bounty runes over there as well. He just walks away. Very questionable play coming out of him. But at bottom of the fight, he's got Jakino about to hit the deck. Here comes Akrid, trying to save the day, but he doesn't get much done because Zim is running through the trees, juking left and right, and gets the hell away before that army slash could tag him. Monkey King emerging the victor of that skirmish. You're giving an off lane Monkey King a freebie. That's not the way you want to be running your trial lane on the side of Yakshas. Yeah. Good stuff coming out from the Monkey King. I mean, it's it's the it's, it's somewhat a basic of uh, running a trial lane up against the lane of any sort. That if you're a support, then you even a little bit out of position away from what you're going to If the enemy sees you and there's some way of slowing you or locking you down, you're pretty much done for. And uh, I, I presume that the Jakiro or Wolfen caught out of position because Dream managed to get four stacks to Jingo Master. I'm not saying that the Lich didn't help in the first last, but this time now Dream keeps his top lift enough to bounce his like, doesn't do anything to the blade to Dream. And Akron or Durka, along with BP's security, kill, he gets a second as well. What was the Lich doing? I cannot for the life of me understand what's going on here. It's not like they had an observer ward no, watching all of this either. They practically attack. just. Okay, they had an observer somewhere down here, but. What they did is they practically walked in with the telekinesis and got a kill and then Lich decides, I think I can tank up the Omni Slash, let me just wait around and see what happens. Gets punished for it. I mean, that even takes away a tower from them. Whatever little lead that they had going for them has been eroded over the last couple of seconds. Yeah. Dyer's middle tower and uh, is now if you take a look at it, it's net worth. Kalnaik and the Earthshake was up there with the Monkey King. Kalnaik indeed is and his blink is coming online but Blue Frog has a bone to pick with him that bash will set up the arrow from make believe it's a five second arrow with a double star storm cool guys don't look at explosions Nirana decides to turn away but instead it's deeply that CT in they're next to the shrine they're gonna pop a moonlight shadow and try to make a break and again no detection this time from the side of Yakshas which means that they can stick around and fight for more. Appa, out, out of position himself, gets tagged with the charge, follow up stuns from the birds, they are coming out, two stuns, back to back, and Arrow will come through and will connect, setting up for the soul assumption, which means that Appa will be deleted, and then a weather strike will hold Freak in position as well, another soul assumption will help secure a kill, it will be make-believe that takes the money for this. And Octobox walk away, the undisputed victors of that skirmish, who says they walk away though, because Akron's in trouble next, Kiko is coming in, he's getting in position. Kalnayak with an absolute whiff of an Echo Slam and a Fisher tags absolutely no one and now might pay for that with his own life if only the Soul Assumption can be there in position. But Kiko has decided to back away. Yeah, Kiko is not sure. I mean, I think he did spot out the Juggernaut using his Omni Slash, but he is uh, showing a little restraint and he did end up backing off. What is really crucial for the Dyer in that fight is that someone on their side was carrying detection. I'm not sure if it was the Lich or the Spirit Breaker, but I saw dust being popped. Yeah, yeah, it was the Spirit Breaker. So Blue Frog has made amends. And, uh, Unfortunately, the Earth Shaker has a lot of amends to make now. That yeah. was one of the worst Echo Slams and Fishes I've seen in a long time. Man. Absolutely. I mean, he just TP'd in thinking, assuming that Blue Frog would be standing around there yeah, waiting and, for him to come Yeah, and would in. stand there like a statue awaiting the Echo Slam. Anywho, 3-6 is the score. A uh, small Radiant's but significant win here for attack. the Dyer. The kill onto the Invoker, the Visage staying alive through all of that. Durka falling once, a couple of kills on the support here and there. And uh, yeah, it's the Visage is a real victor to all of this. Yeah, Charge not much they can do. Charge stolen. I thought all to be lifted, toss it back, Blue Frog as well. Then bring down Dream and then move on to Blue Frog. Blue Frog will fall as well. It's a double kill for Durka who stays alive to all this. But Kiko comes and secures a kill in exchange onto Freak. Kiko being a primary huge source of damage and he's going to go BP with the medallion on top of him and just charge out of the bottom lane. I've never seen a Rubik move like that and he moves right into the river where he finds the region. That is extremely fortunate for BP and the side of Yakshas. Um, works out well for them, I guess. They get uh, two kills. The Monkey King dies, the Spirit Breaker dies. Actor gets himself uh, yeah, Akrid gets a kill. Yeah, Oh, he actually got the double kill there, yeah. so more money in his pocket. And all they really lose for it is a Jakiro. A trade they should be happy to take. 
Blue Frogs move towards mid, but bottom, they've started their job on Durka or Actrid. As he's still trying to make a run for a Kiko. If he can get in range, did he just... I, okay I think he's still microing his birds. He's still microing his birds. He's got the solar submission. He'll get the kill. They hacked the mission with the charge, if I'm not mistaken. Third That's world micro problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when the boundary strike hit, Kiko could have dropped this million, but he waited and he did end up getting the kill away. Mid lane. There's a sun strike. The sun strike won't connect, but VP will get the kill. Abba. He's had a really rough start. He's kept the Midas all together. Radiance the bottom tower faces a stiff wind. Yeah, this is interesting. Radiant structures are fortified. And uh, risky at best. I mean, it, it's not like the Dyer have the strongest pushing lineup. I think he could have oh. actually gone for the Midas after all. Radiant's I think bottom really tower is staggering. Really like I mean, I'm not sure if he made it back there. I mean, he's at 4.8k net no. Far behind the Visage, who's racked up the money courtesy kill. Radiant's bottom tower yeah. is under attack. more important than the gold. I think he's looking for the levels, and that's what the Midas really helps yeah. you with. It's, it's not about the gold, it's about uh, getting that EXP and ensuring that Radiant's you offer a lot more is under attack. fight with uh, the levels you put into cost by the next one. Safe flame tower for the Radiant under siege. Mirana Radiant's taking on the Radiant tower one. He wants to put the ice armor coming in from Max. Double damage. Radiant's bottom and, uh, tower. Is under tries to sneak in ahead. The Kiko is back to the mid lane. The Radiant safe lane tower will fall. Durka's laning phase comes to an abrupt end, and all he has to choke with it is an ER. The prize is uh, Dream farming away. No good just just yet. I mean, it seems to be a Mexican standoff across the mid lane. Everybody is just hanging around. Dyer's top lane. tower is about uh, to take so over. Gonna have the the Atos on Kiko, which is not bad. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's good. It's strength. It's also set up for previous stuns, so it's like a good amount of continuous. Great lockdown. synergy with the Soul Assumption, by the way, because Soul Assumption has a massive area of effect or a massive cast range. And uh, it's oh, yeah? pretty much the same with the Atos as well. So you can stand a mile away, send your birds in the front, lock down a target, and blow him up from range. That uh, may not be the best way to deal with a Juggernaut because, of course, Blade Fury and such. Yeah. But it's Fantastic versus this Invoker who's severely stunted on items and is also going to be the focus of the next engagement. Blue Frog is ready with the dust. They're going to pop a dust and they're going to go straight for him. Appa's down. Kiko. That's a really late solar assumption coming out from him. It was one that wasn't even necessary, to be honest, but it secures them the kill. Yeah. Good stuff uh, coming up from Akramax here. Just uh, knowing that the Invoker is poor and he's going to try and catch up into the jungle. Someone's spotting him out. I think it's the Dire Ward that was hanging near the mid tier one. Uh, oh, the one near the Sapien Road as well. Yeah, that was the tier one. He's going to get the T1. So, Yaksha is trying to make amends here. But uh, this Invoker is just only dropping the item. That lift though, cancels out the charge. It's followed up with an ice path, but they're focusing everything on the tankiest target on one side. While Kiko, with a soul assumption, will blow up VP. Elsewhere, they've got the roots coming out from the Atos. More soul assumptions at the ready. Good echo slam this time around, but unfortunately, it was a tad bit too far in. As Juggernaut, he's trying desperately to get in position upon Kiko. The Blade Fury is available if he wants to use it, but Kiko takes a triple and then forfeits his life to actually do got a double and is looking for a triple of his own. Max, he will fall trade in his Blade Fury, giving over a lot of money to Actrid. The one position on the side of Yaksha's is getting fat now. It's working for him. And look at that, just with those skills, Actrid jumps at the top of the network charts. What uh, worries me a little bit about Radiant's the Aftermath is that the Milana is not attack. participating in these fights. When you move deep into the enemy jungle, you want to be going there as five. And make believe, I'm not sure what he was doing or what he was up to. Kiko, sure he got a triple kill. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, two of them are support. Jakiro with the ATOS and the Rubik with the Soul Assumption. But he gave away a monster kill streak in return. And all that money going towards Acrid on the Juggernaut. What's and immediately. With the item choices here from uh, the Invoker man. I mean, okay, the Axe, of course, you can get behind it. In the absence of the Midas is a bit questionable. But then he's queued up a four staff after that. I cannot get behind the four you? staff. It's either Yules I mean, or a Lincoln Sphere if, it, if you want to deal with that. Look uh, at that top breaker. lane though. Yaksha's on the hunt. They're going to bump into Green. Jungle, the Ice Path will rip. 
the fade bolt connects the fisher is there kalnayak as it is for a moment but it's vp with the lift who throws back the monkey king away from his own team mid up strike it was a horrible horrible gag i mean it's like a fortified yeah if, 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 if you throw it then then you can connect for it if akamak wanted to contest that he could have been the right in the tower has fallen yeah but it's said again at the open time I, that that's a Dyer's top tower is under but attack. That's two tier one towers falling on the map. One in the middle lane for the radiant, and one on the top for the Dyer. Akrid's the one to take the money again. So in addition to that, Manchester is making progress towards the blink dagger next. He's mobile. He's hitting hard, and uh, he's going to be able to get in position to slice and dice a hero. Okay. Um, any anything that Akrid can do in terms of fighting. Make sure that he stays relevant versus the Vistage and the Monkey King. I think King. you go with the standard build-up and just get a Diffusal Blade after that. Okay, he's going for the Diffusal first and then the Blink Tiger eventually. Okay, you can get behind that. Uh, just get as much firepower as you can possibly rack up right now. These are early game items with slow build-ups, cheap gold. Rubik, Rubik, he's chasing them. Uh, I mean, he's got Invis, so he does see the Milana. Make believe senses that something was going on. The blinks away. I think it was Luffy made to try and deny a tower. Oh, but they've managed to catch the lich. He doesn't even get his chain frost off, and the arrow will not connect. The Akshas, they've woken up all of a sudden, and they're just marching down the mid lane. Five heroes at mid with the absence of the lich. Maybe this is when their push will work. They've actually maxed out the liquid fire on Jakiro. So yeah, this this is a good time to try and push for them. I mean. Rayman the trees and look familiar. Maybe he's got an hit on. Look at that VP with the stolen bounce strike. He's forcing Big Billy to come in the lift. The live trying to make a man. The echo slam was decent. The ice path and the back combat. They're focusing Kiko. They've taken out the message. And Dream just jumps into battle. So he's got the move on command. He manages to break down VP. But Blue Frog jumps ahead of his team. Tries to control Dirk. But Dirk turns around with the army slash. Still won't get the kill on the front. Spear breaker. Elsewhere, Tornado EMP. Appa make a run for the familiar side to stun him. But Appa away. No Protection and no Jakiro to work with. The bounty strike is there. The charge is building. Drop the sentry. They get the kill. They manage to take down four of the Akshas and they only lose the message. And Echo Slam seems a bit trigger happy now. He jumped in on a single target in that fight. Ended up getting the kill, sure, but then you had Dream just standing on the trees, starting the Wukong command and. Yeah. The bounce strike holding them in position. Late uh, chain frost coming up from Max actually worked out really well in their favor as well. But that's lit up the fight in two different directions, and that's where the aftermath just capitalized. They're gonna get Roshan on the back of this as well. It doesn't seem like they want to contest on the side I'm, of I'm the aftermath. Sure they don't. I, I don't think arrow. they do. VP just barely sidesteps that arrow. Yeah, I'm gonna get the B1 anyway. Nice. Unable to take out the second time. Saying everything about Shaq. They're in the pit in the road. Nayak and maybe Dhaka move towards the pit. This could be a huge one that goes into the table. Kalang looping around. He wants to jump in. Possibly see the ages of Fisher. There he's going for the split breaker. Will get the split breaker. VP lifts up one top to the mystery ice park. He's Max without a chain shot. The tornado with Dhaka with the blade free. Not catching anyone. Now moving towards the wizard. Bring him down. Taking away the ages. They want Max. They have no means to catch up towards him. Instead, they're going to focus their efforts on the wizard. Bring him down. Nullify the use of the ages and lose nothing in exchange. They're actually chasing further. They see make believe, make believe leaps to the side. The sun strike will miss. Appa has no idea where he is, and Kalnayak his blink on cooldown. He's not going to give chase. So, for the longest time in that fight, the visage was actually standing outside of the pit, just looking at Roshan. Yeah, he wasn't right clicking him at all. Mm -hmm. Maybe that could have been a difference in Roshan going down quicker, attack. but the Dyer's fact that Dream got beaten up throughout that fight before Ro Ro Roshan even dropped meant that Kiko had to stay back and take the ages immediately forfeiting the defensive fight. Because his, his allies could back off. Oh. Max got the ice cut, Kalang goes in, and Tarn told him, but Blue Frog with the Nether Strike will push back the Earth Shake on the chain. First coming in the Frost Blast as well. A charge onto the Jakiro, they're turning their attention towards the ES, and it's Lichu gets the kill. The chain frost manages to bring down VP, and the Jakiro drops the ice bath, but he'll fall. It's a double kill for the Lich of them all, and they lose their tier 2 tower. Though. That was just good fortune for the Lich fan. The chain frost bounces from a hero onto a creep and back to two more heroes. Max will be thanking his stars for this one. Akramax once again fend off the push coming from Yaksha. An Ak odd, from unusual Yaksha's. defense. All because Khalnayak wanted to go in after an ice path. 
Yeah, I really feel like Kalnayak has got to calm his urges here and make sure that he's only picking and choosing battles that he can win. I mean, Urchik is not a hero that's meant to jump in and start a fight with an enchant totem. Yeah. That's not what your blink tag is. I mean, it does damage, but when you watch too much GH God without understanding the reasoning as to why he goes in, you get punished like that. I mean, you can make such plays when your invoke is ready to follow up with the sun strike, when your juggernaut has some means of mobility to join you quickly, when you're doing it by yourself without coordination within the team. It, it backfires like that. You end up giving kills. 24 minutes in, we're still not certain who's taking this game despite the score reading 19 to 14 in favour of Aquamux. They've been doing all right for the most part and they're building the right set of items. Dream's going for a BKB to deal with all of that invoker and Jukiro nonsense and well, Max is going for the Glimmer Cape again to deal with magic damage. The main issue though that they're going to be facing is that the Juggernaut hits like an absolute truck right now. While the Mirana, yeah. I feel like she's just tickling from range. They have the almost exact same items, but Jog, by virtue of having the Blade Dance Blade, ends up up a lot more And if I'm not mistaken, the Omni Slash is an instant delete on any one of these supports. Uh -huh. um, VP in the bottom half of the map, Yakshas, searching for them. Radiance bottom you see all of this. Look at the desperate pings coming out. Even the Moonlight Shadows acts as such a great opportunity for a Chain Frost here. He's walking forward the dust with that. The Chain Frost comes in. It's, in the, it's right in the middle of the jungle. This is as perfect as it gets. But actually, he's managed to go in. Or rather, he's going to be taken out himself because everyone on the side of Octobus was positioned perfectly for that fight. The app has been chased. Do we have... No, they don't actually have detection. Apple's gonna turn with the tornado, a meteor for good measure. And well, a definite blast is completely with, but they will get a kill on the blue frog on the building right there. Waiting for the Echo Slap, goes in onto the Precious of the Moon, gets the kill, takes the Mega Kill streak, and finds Radiant some sort of recovery for the Yakshas in this team fight. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm actually a little disappointed with how the Invoker is playing. I mean, when you got so many heroes soaking up damage for you, when you got the Earth Shaker as a means of lockdown, I haven't out. seen a single, or maybe one, but I haven't seen too many Sunstrikes that have had any impact in these team fights. Yeah, I gotta agree. It's not been, uh, it's not been a stellar performance from Appa. It's Especially after he's been treated to some of Invincible's Invoker very recently. It's underwhelming. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Dream is gonna go for. I, think, I mean, I, I like the BKB for, pickup. He's going for the BKB. That's a grand thing. But what what happens next? What's the next item? Kalang and VP though. Trying to make him work for it. Kalang, watch for that enchant out him. Oh, he got the fish. Oh, he's trying to walk in. He has a four stuff. There's a charge onto the earth shaker, and it's like Appa almost hurt us. The sun strike was perfect. Dream is brought down. This is what the Yakshas need to do more often. This is what they needed to be doing in the first few yeah, exactly. minutes of the game. A high value kill on Dream means that a lot more space and time has been created. Arrow. He flew out to a Dream somewhere. Yeah, there was a charge on the Kalnag, but the Spitbreaker didn't want to run in. Oh. Make believe, what's he got on the Milano? Okay, Manta style, Diffusal. Dyer have the spark oh, at hand. Next. Look at Blue Frog though. I mean, they both have the exact same idea. There is a dire scan. I, I think Blue Frog knows he's there. Or senses he's nearby. Like, that's the only thing that could explain that scan. Yeah, it was just good game sense coming out from him. But VP's trying to use this. He has the TP out now, by the way. But he's trying to use his positioning to his advantage. In case I, I think he's going to take a couple minutes so that he can buy his blink. I am mighty. Is hey. blink the right choice for the Rubik, though? I mean, um, it it isn't the ideal choice. It's not like there's an RP to steal. It's the kind of choice that screams I want some attention, but he's not really going to be able to do that much with it. I'd like to see. If it's what set. would you like to see? A use? Four stuff. Four stuff. Four stuff. Glimmer cape. There's so many utility items that would add so much value to his life. And yeah, the the four stuff is definitely invaluable. Um, Keeps you alive. Could also be used offensively to push the Monkey King out of his own Wukong's command. But look at this. They're on the hunt the again. Akramux that popped the smoke. Kiko has his Ag Scepter, Ag Scepter complete. VP on the other side of the map. It, it's almost as if the Yorkshaws as well as the Akramux just move to opposite ends of the map when they don't know where each other are. They're making 
this is just Radiant a scanning for enemies. It's not in the dark. Yeah, it is. Middle lane is pushing on so deep. This is a but, dead giveaway that there's something going on. So there's one advantage of this. And this is about to take the blood. So you know, it's very unlikely you're going to find anyone else. They, they could force back TP. That, that's what's going to happen. Like, let's take a look at this. Everyone has to hide for what TP is not a... Has anybody not got TPs on the top lane? That's the question. Dyer's top uh -oh. tower is about okay. to take so, the so blood. Yeah. Yaskas, then move tower right here. Oh. Oh. I have to move towards the side oh. top. Okay. Look at that. I think that Hop Hop is the world. I'm going to get the high wall. 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 He's focusing up on will take out the Invoker. 67 seconds with no buyback, and here comes Jay. The Primal Spring is there. The Soul Assumption splits into two. They manage to get the Earth Shaker. They get the Chikiro. Dream is the goal. He's got a BKB, and he's pushing them all right back. It's a buyback coming up from Zerka. The Familiars are there. The Earth Charge is there. Zerka with the healing ward. He's trying to stay alive. His Kill 3 is falling. His Barrack could fall as well. One, they did get the Kill 3. Zerka has to be fine. Is that the ideal use of your Link Dagger when you run in deep and only lose your way in life? The barracks have fallen. The Akra must be back. My eyes are bleeding watching that fight because it felt like the Yaksas had all the tools needed to make a successful defense there, but they just played their hand entirely wrong. That was one of the most underwhelming echo slams I've seen in a long time. Invoker yeah. was basically absent in that fight. I don't even know what he was doing. Um, Rubik decides maybe hero and he decides to go in from behind and try and get a solo kill after his entire team. Okay. What was the point? They have to change the strategy. What would you expect your team and actually do? Bad decision making for the Yaksas. There's no sugar for it. Marksman has... I mean, uh, uh, sorry, Akramux have just capitalized on it. So they all moved to the top half of the map and didn't carry TPs and they were heavily yeah. punished for not carrying TPs. It's a good thing to know that in the dueling fate update, everybody spawns with the TP. But you still have to buy non-subtle hint from that and guys, TPs guys, are important. Guys, TPs are important. We've noticed you don't carry them. We just want to give you TPs. Things are looking shaky for the Yakshas and Akrit is in full power yeah, mode at the moment. Anything could happen uh, in this game of DKB queued up now after his Lincolns. That four stuff is... Okay. Or what, charge? Yeah, I like the Lincolns. I think it's not bad here because the Nether Strike is something that he'd love to negate. Soul Assumption. Even if he can tank up a full damage soul assumption upon himself, guys, that you want to let your like teammates know you're here for them? The he can turn his awesome. Focus the Let's go! 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 With, with all of his HP, he's also got the Gravekeeper's Cloak kicking in with a bonus bit of resistance coming out. So He can stand on the front lines, he can soak up a few hits. If Akrit commits with an Omni Slash immediately, the first four hits from the Omni Slash are also going to be soaked up by the Gravekeeper's Cloak. Yeah. It's such a difficult situation for uh, Yakshas to be in to try and take him down. Would you like to see the Visage build, uh, build into something defensive? A BKB or Hood? At this point? No. I don't think so. I mean, would make no. sense. A BKB would be alright, but more importantly, I'd like to see him get the assault with us and augment both his offensive and defensive capability. Okay. That's right. There's a bunch of ways for him to go here. A link is here, an assault with us, a I mean, BKB. He's eating majority of the magical damage coming up to the outside. He ends up with the Echo Slam. Yeah. Uh, even the Tornado, the MP. Whatever, but then the evoker is throwing out. Even finishing the solar crest wouldn't be an awful choice. Uh huh, good end of the team for sure. Uh, we have to uh, try and push objectives up on the main hit to complete something. It is not out of the main hit, but we see as if the Akshas are not going to contest and that's Aegis and Cheese on the floor. VP. Sitting with the blink dagger doing nothing in this game. Uh, let me finish that sentence for you before you go down that road. And nothing, man. He's, and it's not even his fault, to be honest. It's because of the Rubik pick itself. Dyer's it's such a mist pick in his job. Won't last long. So if, if, if I had to summarize Yaksha's draft this game, it's we kind of want to push. Hold on. We kind of want to fight as well, but we want a Rubik to help do it. Okay. Sorry, he just stole charge, linked away and TP'd out. But yeah, you were saying, if... The Yaksha's draft? Yeah, it's, it's like they're on the fence here, you know, they want to push, they want to fight, they want to farm and... In all of that, I just don't see what the Rubik does. Rubik is one of the supports you pick up as a reaction to either 
big ticket spells that you can steal or a lot of magic damage because of the dull field aura. It's well, there's neither on this side that uh, benefit will be big ticket right. or merit will be big. But, but the funny thing is that despite all of that, in the laning phase it was. I mean, he was as useful as a rubik could be. He set up a whole bunch of kills with the telekinesis. And tried his best. I'm. Uh, in my opinion, Visibility. there's still a lot of room uh, for how the Invoker could have played this game. A lot of room for improvement for how the Invoker could have played this game. Uh, sure, he's got the farm going, but some really questionable item choices. I haven't yet seen the impact of the Preds as an item. Uh, I, I just want to say that in or uh, by okay, VP for all done. practical purposes, yeah. Oh, he's got a blink and blue frog can't be low charge. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to dive uh, between the tier 2 and the tier 3 this early on. But yeah, the tier 2 is not going to dive for long. Eight hours on to VP. VP goes in like the man he is and ends up falling. 48 seconds without the Rubik. He might respawn by the time he shares the tower down the team. He's just disrespecting the cash that they have with those ATOS is yeah. coming out. He does. A lot of range. Found this back, a lot of range. Uh, 35 minutes in, Asha Monks working with a huge advantage. They've got Aegis, Cheese, Elena Barracks. They're going to move towards the shrine. And that's all they've got to do. Pop, get the shrines, come back with the Aegis and the Cheese. Go finish what they started. 20 second window. I am actually a little surprised that they're just backing off here. This is high ground right here. Yeah, Aegis, Cheese, PKBs. Are they waiting for any crucial items just here? Is, is that the reason they're backing off? I think they're just trying to give momentum to this game and just pushing okay. in. Um, for fear of being ratted by maybe a juggernaut. Who, by the way, has picked up a blink dagger next. It's not like he's augmented his damage output any further. He's just trying to get a bit more mobility. Right. Radiant's bottom shrine is under attack. It's going to be really crucial that uh, a couple of things happen uh, correctly for the archers in the next fight. Um, Kalak has to get the echo slam off on the core at the very least. That core has to be included by the sun strike. Uh, that, that's what they really Radiant's need to happen. And they can commit return. everything and bring down. So the problem is that they might bring down the visage, but the monkey king Radiant's is just doing so much in terms of physical fallen. damage. The He's breaking down the support by themselves. The spirit breaker with that charge is another nuisance in these team fights. The armor coming up from the ice armor is an issue. I mean, they did pick up a secondary diffusive blade as well, right, on the monkey king. So. A more control coming out for Dream as well means that. Uh, you cannot afford to be caught out isolated. VP, particularly, he's been caught out time and again. And I mean, I, I get that he's trying to make space and create plays, get in, intel for his teammates. It's not working out in the best possible way for him. Anyway, they're not going to waste too much time. Aftermarks are going to group up and take this tier 2 at mid. With that, the last remaining outer tower falls. In fact, the last remaining outer Radiant's building falls because both shrines have also been taken apart Radiant's by Aftermarks. I don't think they back off here. You just go in, you go hunting with arrows and looking to get some chip damage on the tier 3 because we've got two out of three lanes pushing in. I agree. Send the familiars. Uh, they are disposable to some extent. Try and do as much damage as possible. Be a nuisance. And when you see the right opening, probably go in. But look at this. They're going to walk under a sentry and an observer though. So this is a rather pointless play coming out from the radio. I'm also wondering if at this point they just consider getting a gem and de-warding the entire map. Beyond the of Aftermath. Ah, look at that. They, they drop us in. So that didn't end up working. And Rubik steals Moonlight Shadow. Um, what's the detection like on the side of the tire? Has, has anyone got it's, dust? Apparently, okay. it's, Blue Frog it's has barely dust. existent. You can see the Mirana just bailing. He's like, forget this. I don't want to fight if he stole my stuff. Mirana's also got a lot of gold. Any thoughts on the next item? Deadless mm. butterfly, very viable. Even if a blood thorn is on her lips, I wouldn't be too far Radiant against it. So that's the ages almost entirely wasted. Yeah. They got a tier two they got tower two and two tier shrines. Two towers and two shrines. Not not if. I mean, when one uh, has a later barracks, the next ideal use of pure age is just to get another later barracks. They still have the cheese. And look at this, they managed to pick off blue frog. Instant so space creation coming out from Appa and his boys. They'll move into the jungle and take out a blue frog. But, Appa. but here we go, Appa's in trouble himself. They've got the ATOS to cancel his link. It's an Appa. That's not a fair trade. He stuck around a little longer than he needed to and got punished. Now, in fact, it's Blue Frog and, or rather, it's Akramuk's turn to try and push and force out a buyback here. Because the moment the Spirit Breaker respawns, he can simply charge out into the lane. 
He chose not to hold on to his buyback, instead picking up a mithril hammer, which seems a bit silly. Uh, not a fan. But um, it's not going to hurt him too much because he will be back in 20 seconds anyway. Invoker is holding on to his buyback right now. That means his, delay, his BKB will be delayed if Akramux decides to force this. All they've really got to be wary about is the Earthshaker jumping in with his Echo Slam. So that's the only thing that can threaten them this game. But familiar is Mirana. This tower is falling rapidly. Kalnak has Radiant to jump in. And he doesn't find the real... Or, I mean, not finding a good opportunity to jump in. In both of them, they drop the drop the Macropire on the creeps. The fish as well. The creeps are going to be here. Look at the familiar. They're going to be brought down as well one that's, by one. That's, that's not the way to go, man. You, uh, you, don't, you don't give up 300 gold that yeah, easily. And, he, and it's, on, it's on cooldown. So it's going to hurt them even more. This means that uh, the Akramunks might have to back off. They have to bit. back off. They, but they don't want to go in here because you no know, familiar is essentially Actually, means Actually, Brufrog's just charging in. They useless. have... Vision, they're not going to come in. Tier 3 tower, tier 3 tower. It's going to fall slowly, but surely. And uh, just going to try and push down the mid lane as much as possible. Apa. What's he going to go for? He's, he is going for the BKB, so we're going to have to wait and see if he can actually pull it out. Just about 700 more gold to go before he can pull that off. Oh, look at this. They've got the Mirana. The control is there, but a boundless strike might just turn the fight around. Make believe for the Tee Stones around the charges there. Now the strike, they've eliminated the Rubik. The move on Samar to keep them back. There's an EMP on the floor, a macro fight as well, but they've both got BKBs. The tier 3 tower will fall. Kalayak being controlled, his blink being cancelled. He wants to go in. Dirk up off the Blade Fury, and I'm not sure what he really accomplished. The Tornado has the Spirit Breaker, but they don't care. The Spirit Breaker is just food. It's gonna feed him away. Yes, one kill attack. on the Spirit Breaker, but they did get a tier 3 in exchange for it, so maybe that does work out. I mean, of course, it was a buyback on the Rubik as well, so it definitely does work out yes. for Aftermux. Maybe they're just going to wait for the next Aegis and then go back. This is very questionable stuff coming out from the Aftermux as well. It's been their game to lose for a long time now, but they're slowly... They're dragging it on a lot longer than they need to, and the longer you go into the late game phase, the more opportunities you're going to give over towards Yakshas to try and punish you for your mistakes. A kill on Blue Frog is worth what? 312 gold at this point. The gold goes over to the Invoker, who's inching closer to level 25. When he's level 25, he's going to have that uh, 18 second tornado cooldown, which is what I assume he's going to go for. And when you have the tornado cooldown, the pushes become significantly harder. Yeah. You don't want to wait too long. You're giving Kalnayak more chances to land those supreme echo slams. I just like to see A the Visage Siege with Familiars B, if not the Mirana and the Visage just pop the Mirana and the Monkey King just pop their BKB, drop the Wukong's command, push them away without grouping up though for an Echo Slam. That, that's, that's all they need to do. A siege is really a possibility here for the Arkham. So look at this, they've gone in, they've got the wow. Mirana, the Echo Slam is there, the control is there with the Ghost Slam, they throw everything in the kitchen sink on the Mirana and they do indeed bring her down. That, uh, it actually works out fine because uh, their spells, their spell cooldowns sync up quite well with her. Yes. So 80 seconds till the Mirana is out and 90 seconds till the uh, Echo Slam is online again. So yeah. I don't think a 20 second window is enough for the Mirana to push through. That was good for uh, Yakshas, and again, like you said, they've just been waiting too long on the side of Akramux. The mark of a good team is one that knows how to end the game when they're supposed to end the game, and Akramux are showing that they're lacking that mark. Yeah. This may come back to hurt them if Yakshas can capitalize on it. How do you like? Uh, I really hope that the Yakshas capitalize on this. Keep finding pickoffs. Keep finding pickoffs and start forcing out buybacks. That's slowly eroding that net worth advantage that uh, the Arctomax have picked up. Yeah, and, and if you take a look, the net worth advantage has dipped a bit. I'd like to see the Arctomax, uh, I mean, just pick up a gem. It's such a no nonsense approach and it's so crucial to uh, try and end the game. Instead, the Lich picks up a smoke. Now oh, uh, I mean, they're dreaming about items like the butterfly. Okay, a butterfly is already picked up on one side with the Mirana. They're looking for a butterfly on the Monkey King as well. While they may Radiant not have ways to deal with the enemies. evasion, they are going to have ways to control them in these team yeah. fights once their BKB is run So, so that, that previous engagement was a little situational because Kalnai controlled him with the stun. Uh, I think Mirana still has a 9 second BKB. Regeneration. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if uh, the Akramunks wanted, they could just march down mid, pop that BKB and just focus the barracks along with the familiars. There's not much the Akshas can do. And with this blanket of security that they're hoping to secure soon enough, the game is going to get harder and harder for the Akshas. 
The Akshas can defend high ground though, even if they have any ages on the side of uh, Akramak. Like I said, just a couple of missteps is all it's gonna take for them to get out of position and isolated and drop down. Invoker's got a fair bit of control. He may just be able to touch well, level 25 before the fight breaks out. So, Akramak's pushing in the bottom lane, doesn't have a shrine to go back to. Um, why does he need a shrine to go back? To? I, I mean, he's going to TP back to base. If, if contesting Roshan was a plan, he couldn't contest Roshan. Oh. That's what I meant. But yeah, they're just going to probably march down mid. Do you think it's possible them to go back for that tier? What? I don't know. Someone's got to go back and they'll push out the wave from the high bit. ground because you don't know if the invoker's standing there. I think the Spirit Breaker is the ideal choice. He can join you also rather quickly in fights of the charge. Okay, so VP. Stayed in the bottom lane. What is this? Man? It's a casual mithril hammer which he bought attack. instead of saving buyback at one point. Still doesn't have buyback. So, I, okay, I can't for the life of me figure out what the hell Aftermarks are doing. They should have been going back to defend their tier 3 or they should have been committing to a push. Instead, they half committed to both and now they're just gonna pop a casual moonlight and wait on the low ground. They're just, they're, they're scared. They're pushing out here. They should be going in so and finishing it the game. It seems like five people giving commands and orders at once. It's like when you go to a hotel and everybody tells, I want this, I want that, and nobody <laughs> really knows what they want. Ah, sun track. It's gonna hurt Dream a little bit. Shared by Blue Frog though. He's got the urn. It's gonna keep going. They have BKBs, Yakshas. I mean, they have to start the fight before the Akramaks approach their high ground. The bottom lane, at least, is pushing in their favor. So if they do end up winning this fight, they could apply a little bit of pressure and possibly take a tier 3 in the bottom half of the VP. Uh, what? Relax, nothing's he, happening. He was trying to steal the arrow. That could be crucial though if they do manage hey. to get it. Well, this is uh, attempt number 999 with Aftermarks trying to break the buildings. Arrow does get stolen, better late than never. Make believe will take a sun strike to the face. While the familiars have gone in the range barracks, easy 300 gold. All 300 gold over towards Appa. For what? A range barracks, Kiko? No respawn in it either. So he's a sitting duck. He's literally a duck, a bird just walking away here. And all they got was a range barracks. I, at this point, I'm questioning if it was even worth it to get that range barracks for giving up a familiars like this. Maybe he's got the arrow. He's uh, chewing through the trees so that he gets a little vision from the high ground. They should be committing to a fight, man. I mean, try for the arrow or commit with the Spirit Breaker charging in. Go for the kills. You've got the Aegis, you've got the cheese. And you've got a lane pushing in from the bottom lane now. Akramaks is still working with the net worth advantage. Um, I honestly don't mind the Milana just popping a BKB and focusing the barracks. There's really nothing that the Yakshas can do. It might require the Juggernaut jumping in with his Blink Dagger, but Akrit might want to reserve that for better and better moments. Fisher, I spot the arrow comes sailing through. I think a familiar did end up tanking it up. A cool snap onto the Milana, make believe just pops his BKB and hopefully he'll focus down the barracks. The familiars are here, the barracks will fall, the ice spot does nothing, make believe runs away. That's two lanes of barracks going towards the Akramaks. And another 300 gold over to Appa. This is, I'm pretty sure this is not the way to be using this familiars, but it's working for now. They do open up two sides of the so, map. And so they have ages and chase. I, I really hope they... Well, you can't though, because you, you don't have familiars for a minute now because of the way you threw them down there. Appa is almost 25 and Akrit has already prepared himself to deal with these super cool yes. and he went for the males so. He's got the Mjolnir. I'd assume Appa goes for the Mjolnir himself as well. I don't want to see the Shivers guard on him at all. I think the Mjolnir is what he needs to push out the wa these waves again and again. Okay. Again. Butterflies online for him as well and there's still no true strike on the side of uh, Yakshas. Got that window of opportunity to keep nothing going. And if they way. find a pickoff before they go up onto the high ground, there is just nothing like it. And oh, VP got so far down the line that even the Akramaks are not going to be able to get in position to contest. Yeah. A couple of quick four stars, if I'm not mistaken, free kid used his. And a smoke in the base from the Yakshas. They want nice. to fight before VP approach them. How's this going to begin? Uh, VP walking up, Appa in position, VP lays down the arrow dream, not in the trees, the familiars going through, VP blinks away, the Atos is there, a charge as well, a, a snap on the background, there's the Meteor Kalank will fall, Dream pops the Wukong's command, 
The Visage is taking damage, but he's getting away as well. The Chain Frost bouncing away. Alpha dropping low. Brought down by Drape. And the Chain Frost doing its thing while Blue Frog gives Chase a charge on the BP. Immediately cancelled by the Spit Breaker himself. The Primal Spring will miss, but the damage is there. Dream scores a double. Up, up, buys back. VP buys back as well. But look at that. They've got nothing to work with. An arrow onto the Earthshaker. Dream caught in the trees. Lifted by VP. Where's the fallout from the Akra Monks? Nobody saving that Monkey King. And they're going to let their Monkey King fall. Visage was low on health and was forced to buy back while Make Believe felt that he really couldn't close the gap. A Yule Scepter into an Enchant Totem, but here comes the Visage with the ATOS. He's got full HP, but he's teeping back home. VP, meanwhile, trying to catch another Make Believe caught with the Enchant Totem and the Fisher. They've got detection. There's an EMP on the floor, but Make Believe with the Martyr Side shrugs it off, tries to make a run, but he's cornered, surrounded, and brought down in the trees. All they get is the Jakiro. They did, however, force a couple of crucial buybacks, but they didn't get any structures. All right, ladies and gentlemen, strap on your seat belts because we're in for a comeback and this game doesn't look like it's ending anytime soon. Akramux have made all the possible mistakes that they could have to extend this particular match and Yakshas are capitalizing. It did cost a lot of buybacks on the side of Yakshas but they hold their high ground without so much as a scratch on their tier 3 tower. It's it's a very disappointing way for, Marks, uh, for uh, Akramux to walk up onto the high ground like this and get punished because Every single death on your hero is worth so much money and EXP at this point. We talked about the level 25 invoker. He's there right now. He's got that, in, that minus 18 second tornado cooldown kicking in. And, well, Acrid not dying in that last fight means he's gonna have the Mjolnir plus some money to spare for the next fight. I think he has to quickly try and find his uh, MKB so that he can deal with those butterflies. And, uh, I mean, then even if you pop a BKB and try and just focus barracks on a tier 3, the Juggernaut can just blink in and go ham on you. The objective here for Yaksha should not be to take barracks. I think it should be to just take a tier 3 and run away. If they can force a buyback on Mirana, that's an added cherry on top. Yeah. That trade. Never mind, okay. They're not even going to go for that. Has Monk hit level 20 now? He has not. Okay. Oh, VP? Okay. Quick sprint. Well, you do have the BKB finished up on Blue Frog, and I believe he did use it in that last fight. The fight only began because Kalnayak decided to just man mode in past enemy lines. Yeah. But I mean, that was still four or three buybacks coming up from the Yakshas. So they did hold on to the tier three, but they did uh, buyback on a bunch of heroes. I'm not mistaken, Alpha did buyback on the Invoker. I'm not sure if Durka bought back as well. Uh, but yeah, even Mrs has a BKB of his own. He's not the best when it comes to hitting buildings, but this is going to allow him to stay alive uh, from all that control and magical damage Ooh. coming out from the Earth Shaker as well as the Invoker. Make believe. Up next, he's got a. What's a Cuda? Not make believe, sorry. Uh, that's, that's the Invoker. Invoker. Appa. Appa is. I mean, make believe is hitting pretty hard and pretty fast, but in the absence of crit, I think. That's uh, going to come back to hurt him because he's not able to finish off a target quickly enough, right? He doesn't he's have massive sources of damage, he's just got repetitive sources of damage. Right. He's also got the leap attack speed talent, if I'm not mistaken. So that's going to help him oh. and the familiar just um, Yeah, I'm, not, I'm almost never a fan of this. The triple arrow is just such a game changer in the late game stage. You knock two heroes with a 3 to 5 second arrow and that, that's your cue to go in. Or you... Leap in and hope that even the families break down buildings quicker. I don't That's know. That's so risky, especially if there's a fortification. Oh, available. dream, VP. VP. This is risky. Where's Blue Frog going though? Oh, he has <laughs> the Primal Spring. Where was the charge? Blue Frog, what were you waiting for? VP, Primal Spring's down. Blue Frog, I mean, he does see him if I'm not mistaken, but VP did manage to blink away. Quick fingers coming out from VP. That should have been a kill on the Rubik. And that should have been Akramunks possibly going high ground with a man advantage. Very careless stuff coming out from the Spirit Breaker. Should have had his eyes peeled over there. Constant sun strikes in the pit to spot when Roshan is back online. A familiar left in there as well. Akramaks have made up their mind that they don't want to go without the next Aegis and the Cheese. I'd assume it's Monkey King that holds on to the Aegis. Mirana is out of slots and taking it oh, on her would be greedy as well. Goslam They want to eliminate the Mirana, but she manages to pop her BKB and she gets away. Make believe. That was actually Dream coming in with a two-man boundless strike to stop the chain stuns coming out from the Earthshaker. 
Watch for a sun strike. Okay? That connects on make believe that could be the game changer, but never mind. Gonna shrine up and wait for Rosh. Oh, yeah, I mean, that that hurts. Now it's it's just so much harder for the Yakshas to contest the Akramanks around the Rosh pit without the Echo Slam. Mm -hmm. It's one key component of their team fight taken away. This is one of those rare games where even the Lich might be hitting level 25. He's already got the 120 GPM talent coming online, so Max can start to be more, more and more useful as time passes. This. They yeah, want to contest. They've got Akron coming in with the match. Has Blue Frog pops his BKB and smacks BP on the way out there. Roshan will drop. Dream picks up the Aegis and the Cheese, and now they're ready to fight. Kiko, does he have a bit of lockdown targets? His familiars are out there on the front lines, and BP with the stolen Primal Spring will be able to make a break for it. Yakshas, their backs against the wall, a 22,000 net worth advantage in favour of the Akramanks. Aegis, Cheese, a BKB on the Mirana, a BKB on the Visage and a BKB on the Spin Breaker, which is probably on cooldown right now. How do they defend without the Echo Slam? It's, it's Invoker and They've then They've just got to wait 20 seconds though, because that's when the Echo Slam comes back online. They have a fortification to add some time to that as well. Tornadoes, EMPs, macro fires, and everything being thrown to slow this down. I they charged an illusion. They actually fell for it. They charged an illusion and now Blue Frog has been sent behind the ice wall. He's trying to go in, but the cold snap will prevent him. Meanwhile, Make Me pops his BKB and starts right clicking the buildings which have been fortified. Familiars losing their life on the middle of the battlefield. Kiko doesn't even have a resummon on them. Echo Slam is back. Kalnaya goes in and they slice up Make Me who pops the cheese and gets the hell out. Monkey King. Still alive, the age is now going to get triggered. The chain thrust dropped down as well. While Akron has been stunned up and brought apart. One more hit will do the trick, but he gets four stuff out to safety. He actually survives all of it and lives to tell the tale for another day. Wukong's command is on the floor. The ice path is there as well as the ice wall. Kiko wants to go on VP. He, he actually popped his BKB and wanted VP. There's an EMP on the floor. Don't have to come back in. Blade Fury, no mana to work with. Forced to run away. I think the diffuser from the Milana did the job. Dream controlled by the Cold Star. This could be the Aegis taken away from them. That was not and the Aegis, that was him. Excuse me, that was him taken away. He did end up falling in the previous fight. Durka scores a double, wants to go for more. Max has the Ghost Scepter, but Durka has a diffuser and plenty of charges to work with. But Max with the Glimmer Cape is possibly getting out of here. It's oh. them versus Mega King, but Durka oh, yeah. with the bash, knew where he was, brought him down. They've got the Mjolnir on the Juggernaut. They've got the Invoker with the 18 second Tornado cooldown. Can the Yakshas hold on? This is... It's such a tall order though. But it's not impossible. It's definitely not impossible. I think the Jog's probably going to need some life steal coming out for himself. To be able to survive versus uh, the Mega Creeps that he's trying to take the fight to. But what does he drop if he wants life steal? Um... I don't hey, think you can drop anything. Uh, I, you I think need the blink, but if you if you want an upgrade to any one of your core items, you have to put the blink in your mm -hmm. inventory. That's the or way. you just go for the moon shard now and put all your eggs into one basket, which is uh, that you'll stand behind the creep and make sure that you push before the creeps die. Appa's struggling to deal with creeps though. I mean, he needed that Mjolnir himself to make sure that he could stop these from coming out. Yeah. No buybacks needed to be committed on the side of Octomux. Once they respawn, all they've got to do is come back in and hope to find a pick off post which they can take a building. They have buybacks though. A bunch of buybacks are available in this game. I'd be extremely surprised if uh, they chose to wait for another Aegis and Cheese before going high ground. They could, You'd be surprised. theoretically, but... That's more time that they're heading, giving over to the other side to keep farming these mega creeps and getting new items and level 25 talents online. I mean, in, instead of waiting for Aegis and Cheese, you probably want to pick up items if they're on the way. You want to keep buyback and that's when you want to go for the killing blow in my opinion. Pick up a gem for sure. I think the Lich has one. Um, I did see a gem somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's actually gone over to VP now. Okay. Yeah, it was owned so by just Max. push with the gem, that's all you need to do once you have buybacks. Ideally. EP is going to use that gem for now to get some D wards going of his own. Even drops a sentry there for good measure. Mm -hmm. 
But everyone is alive now and it looks like they're looking to split push. I'm not sure why they're not sticking as a five-man unit right now. Because having everyone spread across the map like this means that uh, if two or more heroes decide to smoke and go hunting, it'll be worth their while. It, it would be, but they're also a little confident that with the waves pushing in, it's unlikely that the Radiant might attempt to uh, smoke in Uh but, the, but right now, Mirana's in a dangerous place. Mirana is all by herself in the bottom lane. And uh, she did show, and uh, Durka, I, I mean, if he had Kalak nearby, he would have possibly attempted going for that kill. Lanes are pushing in. Yakshas. Have, have any of them got... Has Dream got AFK? Okay. He's waiting for the next rune before he comes to okay, fight. Okay, fair enough. He's got enough to afford Ascari if he chooses to complete it as well. So. I think he might. He's... Uh, okay, he's got the double damage. Double damage! Mirana would be one of the ideal candidates for that rune. <laughs> but he could also just pick it up himself. It, I, it, okay, the, it's go time. It's go time for the Akramans. I wonder if it is though, because no one on the side of Yakshas is stepping out, overstepping their boundaries, just staying inside their base. Kiko's so, gonna show himself on the bottom side. He's I mean, got uh, pretty familiar. much all, all they have to do is. Why is Kiko not summon this familiar? He could have right now. You summon them on cooldown unless yeah. they're already alive. I don't know why he hasn't summoned them yet. Or are they elsewhere that I'm not looking at? No, he just hasn't summoned them. Okay. So all. Uh, I mean, all that Akramans have to do is walk up near the tier force, or Dream needs to walk up, pop his BGD, drop the Wukong, come on. Good dodge there, eh? from active, dodging that ATOS coming out from the basic. This is so silly. This is. Um, they didn't get arrow? a stun on BP though. Here come the familiars, they were actually out there on the side and we didn't see them. No, never mind, he actually summoned them right about now. Familiar number one goes down and he's wasted a good 100 seconds when he could have a second set of familiars ready to go. Here we go, Appa, Lincoln's triggered, four stars backwards, the tier four is taking some damage, and Dream is just right clicking left, but now the fortification comes out at the worst possible time while Blue Frog goes in on Appa, commits everything on him to slow him down. A shrine gets tagged by Kalnayak on the side, the Wukong's command dropped down and everyone is just dodging the Wukong's command for now. Watch for Kalnayak to blink in with the Echo Slam, they got a two-man tornado, a macro pyre under their feet as well, now Kalnayak wants to go in, goes and gets the Echo and gets the kill on Blue Frog while the Aegis gets taken away, actually scratch that, there was no Aegis, Monkey King is dead for 90 seconds. But the throne is exposed and Make Believe is going for it. They've gone in on Appa. Appa is manning up with the cold snap, trying to fight his way through. Immediately buys back and looks for the return kills. Max up in the air, but they're going for the throne and the throne is dropping. The throne is dropping quickly and it's GG in what should have ended a long time ago. Akramux takes the victory.